It's not a Beyonce album unless, one, she kicks her dad in his freaking kneecaps. Two, she drags good hair by her hair follicles. And three, she big up her mama. It's not a Beyonce album if she don't do all three. Gather round, gather round. Beyonce has blessed us with her eighth studio album, Act Two, Cowboy Carter. And much like every Beyonce album release drop, this is a unified and communal event for the Beehive and even the casual listeners of Beyonce to reflect, rejoice, and bask in the authentic artistry from someone who has mastered their craft. While I am overjoyed that B is reviving full-length albums again, to prevent this video from being unnecessarily long, I will highlight and review some of my favorite tracks from what I think is Beyonce's most standout experimental album of her career. For starters, like this one tweet said, I'd like to thank the audience of the 2016 CMAs for pissing this woman off so badly, oh my gosh. As Beyonce stated in her Instagram post, she said this album was five years in the making and it was born out of an experience she had years ago where it was very obvious that she did not feel welcomed. With American Requiem, Beyonce delivers her musical State of the Union address, which fans anxiously look forward to to understand the state of mind Beyonce is in and the message she is trying to convey. With this intro, Beyonce's statement is candid and outspoken regarding the critiques she has faced over the last 25 plus years, by which people have said she sounds quote unquote too country, but now that she is trying to enter the country arena, she is not country enough to fit in. This song is undoubtedly powerful as Beyonce is proudly embracing and honoring her ancestral roots in Texas, Louisiana, and Alabama, and not just reclaiming, but opening the doors of a culture that has always lived within Beyonce. I did a song with Beyonce. I did a song with Beyonce. I did two songs with Beyonce. I did two songs. Yeah. Black Bird featuring Tanner Adele, Britney Spencer, Tierra Kennedy, and Raina Roberts is a warm, serene, and most importantly, an honorable cover to the original 1968 Black Bird song written by Paul McCartney and John Lennon. In the original song, Paul mentioned in England that Bird is a girl, so he used Black Bird as a metaphor for Black Girl. He also said that he was inspired to write the song after hearing about the Little Rock Nine, a group of students in Arkansas who faced discrimination after enrolling in a formerly all-white school in 1957. Paul said, quote, I was sitting around with my acoustic guitar and I heard about the civil rights troubles that were happening in the 60s in Alabama, Mississippi, Little Rock in particular. I just thought it would be really good if I could write something that if it ever reached any of the people going through these problems, it might give them a little bit of hope. So I wrote Black Bird. While this song has been covered by many other famous musicians, this cover is a heartwarming acknowledgement and affirming love letter to the other singers featured on this track. While there may be gatekeepers in the country music industry who strive to ignore and discredit the black women in the genre, Beyonce chose to uplift her counterparts and encourage black women to keep fighting and to use the adversity as their fuel to keep pushing even when times get dark. I also just love how Beyonce sent flowers and personalized cards to pretty much every black woman in the country music genre such as Kay Michelle and Mickey Guyton who have felt at times pushed back in their careers. This act by Beyonce I feel is just a testament to her gracious character. I will not go into depth about 16 Carriages as I spoke at length about this song and Texas Hold'em in my new music review video of the songs that is linked in the description, but I will say that it is perfectly placed in this project and sounds a hundred times better in the sequence of the album. It still makes me emotional every time I hear it and I like this one tweet that said, 16 Carriages is quite literally a masterpiece and perhaps one of the best country songs released in the past decade. The lyrics masterfully frame Beyonce's life story as a classic western ballad and all of it is set against a beautiful blend of country, rock, and soul music. I personally love when my favorite artists become mothers and start implementing mommy bars or lyrics into their music because it always just hits different. Obviously, this is not the first time Beyonce has included her children into her music, but I believe this is the first time we are introduced to Rumi's sweet voice in the musical landscape, and it could not have occurred on a more fitting song. Beyonce vocalizes her motherly and nurturing instincts as she expresses her maternal values in guiding, motivating, and loving her children throughout their lifetime and beyond. I absolutely love how Beyonce interchangeably uses protector and projector and when she sings, I first saw your face in your father's gaze, there's a long line of hands carrying your name, lifting you up so you will be raised. Much like Halle Berry expressed in her tweet, Bodyguard is an undeniable mid-tempo country pop record that could easily be a summer hit. I thought it was funny when someone said B finally has a song dedicated to Julius. It is a fun and easy listen and it is an excellent and seamless warm up 
and disclaimer to the scathing drag that Beyonce is about to deliver in the following track. The Dolly P interlude immediately made me emotional because I was hoping and praying that B would do a cover to this song and my prayers were answered when Dolly confirmed Beyonce did a cover to the song and when B eventually dropped the track list. For someone of Dolly's stature to not only embrace but to happily allow Beyonce to cover such a historically significant song and to then introduce a beat to Beyonce's version of the song has to be a huge pinch me moment for Beyonce. This is literally Dolly parting, giving you the stamp of approval and showering her reverence and love onto B, which I can imagine has to feel rewarding and surreal. I say all that to say, I first listened to this album as I was driving and when Jolene started playing, I was so scared. B was tearing Jolene to shreds and I was here for it all. I just love how Beyonce modernized the song and made the song sound even more refined and fresh to fit this era. My favorite line was when B said, There's a thousand girls in every room that act as desperate as you do. You a bird, go on and sing your tune, Jolene. Like this tweet said, Every day y'all keep wondering why that woman's still with that man. Have y'all listened to her music? She would peel y'all muffin cap back blue over him. I felt every single word Beyonce uttered, and it was probably one of the most lethal threats I've heard in a while. And B did not disappoint one bit. As expected, she exceeded expectations by reimagining this classic song, and given that, I need a live performance of this song immediately. Daughter absolutely gagged me off of the first listen. Beyonce took us back a few centuries to the 18th century popular opera song Caro Mio Ben. It was written in the early 1780s by a member of the Giordano family. At different points, it has been attributed to Giuseppe or likely his older brother Tommaso. And like many Italian arias and songs, its lyrics is brief. The singer expresses heartache in the absence of a loved one and begs for the end of a conflict with them before returning to the sentiment of the pain caused by the loss. This dark murder revenge ballad hauntingly describes a brawl in the bathroom that causes Beyonce to reflect and accept her ruthless similarities to her father and how she uses those traits to her advantage when someone underestimates her unassuming nature. In my mind, Daughter is like the matured version of her songs Ave Maria or even Haunted from the self-titled project as they share that eerie, spooky, and genre-bending elements. The melancholic storytelling and Beyonce's incredible Italian operatic skills culminated in a personalized version of her showcasing her bravado and cutthroat nature. While Spaghetti, Alligator Tears, and Just For Fun were not my favorite tracks, they all showcased the acknowledgement and acceptance of country music innovators like Linda Martell, who was one of the first black women to open up the doors for women in country music, as well as the one of the most important figures in the genre, Willie Nelson. One of the most profound statements in the album comes from Willie as he narrates, sometimes you don't know what you like until someone you trust turns you on to some real good-ish. Other than Jolene, I was most looking forward to Beyonce's collaboration with Miley Cyrus because, well, honestly, I don't think it deserves an explanation because as someone who grew up on Miley, she is music royalty to me and her voice is heavenly designed for country music. I feel like there were theories circulating online that this song was going to be a continuation of the song Telephone with Beyonce and Lady Gaga, which would have been cool, but I'm satisfied with this duo as well. Miley has had an incredible and massively successful last two years, and this collab is the cherry on top because their voices blend so seamlessly. It definitely gives a Thelma and Louise sisterhood anthem that expresses that kinship and devotion girlfriends have for one another, and it's even better that neither vocalist overpowered one another. While the production is quite underwhelming, the message is clear and strong. I will not lie to y'all, I went into this album fully prepared to hate Levi's jeans, I'm not really a Post Malone fan as his music does not do anything for me, but he ate on this song. They both complement each other incredibly well, especially the way he seamlessly entered the song. After listening to this song dozens of times, it is hard to picture any other artist who would have been able to capture that southern drawl and hazy delivery that this song required. This is definitely one of my favorites from the project. I can already tell that the choreography for Yaya is going to be insanity. That is the first thought that came to my mind because everything about how this song is constructed is intentionally made to be performed live. Yaya, which samples Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Were Made For Walking and the Beach Boys track Good Vibrations, instantly forces listeners to get up and dance as it is a subtle but unmistakable tribute to one of Beyonce's inspirations, the late Tina Turner. It reminded me of one of Tina's most iconic performances as we all saw how amazing Tina was as a dancer and I think B may give the girls a similar routine on tour which I desperately need to see. I also think this song is a great easter egg acknowledgement of the country era Tina explored in her career as she has covered a range of famous country songs and performed on platforms such as the Lynn Anderson television special in 1977. As a final point, my favorite line of the song was when B said if you don't like Riverdance, I don't think we could get along because this song has been placed in the Hall of Fame of my all-time favorite Beyonce songs. 
There is no flaw on this track, and it is a perfect bridge of the Cowboy Carter and Renaissance albums, given the reminiscent disco themes Beyonce previously explored. Two Hands to Heaven feels like a three and a half minute daydream. It has a very euphoric aura and a feel of Nirvana, as I feel Beyonce transports listeners to a road trip her and Jay-Z are having in Arizona. I love the part of the song when Beyonce sings, wherever you wanna go, that's fine with me, I'll never stop you, you'll never stop me from being whatever we need to be. As simple as it is, I think it is one of the most significant lyrics as it symbolizes the unbreakable bond, support, and admiration B and J have for each other. I know Beyonce fans feel their ways about Jay, but I don't think he gets enough recognition for how hard he pushes and supports Beyonce throughout their last 20 years of being together. Not every man is as secure and confident enough to be in the background and uplift their wife to be powerful and successful in her own right. Despite his past infidelity tribulations, Jay has continued to show up for B during every aspect of her life, and it makes sense why she continues to admire her husband in almost every single song. Amen is undoubtedly a moving song that concludes the mission Beyonce sought out to accomplish. She aimed to join the movement in shattering the doors built by the gatekeepers in a culture that have tried to shut black people out, and the way Beyonce sings with such relief, solace, and confidence assures her ancestors that she has hopefully made them proud and granted them a sense of peace. By ending this song and album with Amen, it is the end result of her struggles personally and professionally and the prayers she has bestowed upon her family and the prayers that have blessed her throughout her lifetime. In an official statement describing the album, Beyonce said each song is its own version of a reimagined Western film. She took inspiration from films like Five Fingers from Marseille, Urban Cowboy, The Hateful Eight, Space Cowboys, The Harder They Fall, and Killers of the Flower Moon, often having the films playing on the screen during the recording process. Some aspects of the percussion were inspired by the Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack, Where Was More Bluegrass. This body of work undulates from singing cowboy and black exploitation to spaghetti westerns and fantasy with Beyonce weaving between personal experiences, honoring black history to exaggerated character building. Beyonce uniquely blended so many genres and instruments like R&B, folk, disco, the acoustic guitar, the piano, the banjo, and the oh-so-reliable hand claps to meticulously craft a career-redefining experimental body of work that sonically surpasses anything I have ever heard from her. Much like Lemonade, I feel like I got to know Beyonce on a deeper level and how she approaches and appreciates her artistry. What stood out to me the most is her impeccable vocals and vocal production. I swear the older she has gotten, the more huskier, controlled, and refined her voice has become. There is not one single flaw, and that skill is only accomplished through decades of care and respect for her God-given talents. Her voice elevated the storytelling to unparalleled heights, and for that, I would deem Cowboy Carter her strongest vocal and lyrical productions. I will admit that while I appreciate the fact that B gave us actual full-length songs, I don't think the project warranted 27 tracks. I personally could have gone without My Rose, Spaghetti, O Louisiana, Tyrant, and Sweet Honey Buckin' because those songs did nothing for me. However, it is genuinely heartwarming to see all the praise she is receiving from so many respected industry people like Vice President Kamala Harris when she said, thank you for reminding us to never feel confined to other people's perspective of what our lane is. You have redefined a genre and reclaimed country music's black roots. Your music continues to inspire us all or Dionne Warwick who said the album was wonderful, and Anita Baker who said creatives often admire each other. Beyonce Solange create without boundaries. Today, I woke up in a new musical world where Italian opera beautifully fuses with spaghetti western melodies, where Jolene gets checked and Post Malone sings. I think regardless how haters or critics feel about Beyonce, you cannot put her into any box. She has proven time and time again that she is capable of doing more than R&B, and does not fit the mold of predictability when it comes to releasing music. This album illuminates the fact that Beyonce was born and raised in the country and how much of the essential elements of the genre run through her blood. This fact is also proven by the ABC Nightline Impact documentary they did on Beyonce, which highlighted Beyonce's rodeo roots and how much of an impact she has made on her hometown and genre by her mere presence. What she is doing is going to have a huge impact for generations to come, and regardless how people feel about the album, does not negate its cultural and societal significance. Overall, I would say my favorite songs are Blackbird, 16 Carriages, Bodyguard, Jolene, Daughter, Levi's Jeans, Flamenco, and Riverdance because Riverdance is really just that girl. As of now, this album is number four behind B-Day, four, and even I Count Everything Love as my favorite album from Beyonce. Anyways, please let me know in the comments what you all think of Cowboy Carter and where you would rank this album in Beyonce's discography. What are some of your favorite songs from the project and which songs do you think deserve a music video? Do you plan on attending a concert if Beyonce announces a tour? Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell, and I'll see you next time.